International Soccer Preview, we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 20, the 2023 African Cup. This episode is looking at the players of Mali. Here we go. Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is a continuation of Series 20 on the 2023 African Cup, played in 2024. Um, we have done a full and short version on the groups and teams and are now looking at the players of each team, this episode covering Mali's players. I tried to approximate uh, the colors of Mali in my shirt uh, and the only thing I have is a Brazil shirt with a little red underneath to, uh, to uh, come as close as I could. I'm sorry, Mali, Mali fans, but I don't have a Mali shirt. Anyway, here we go. Uh, this is um, uh, part one of a media cast that we're doing in two parts. And uh, here we're looking at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it. Part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad selected. Uh, we think that'll be in early January. And at that time, we'll go back over the list that we compiled today and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover a few other things that I'll talk about at the end of this media cast. Uh, we did do a media cast on the players of Mali going into the 2021 African Cup, which took place in January 2022. Uh, check the link in the show notes for that. Uh, that version provided biographies on the candidates in quite a bit of detail. And since a lot of that is still relevant, we've decided not to commit ourselves to a full player media cast every two years for the African region. So we're going to be treating this one as more of an update. In that series, we were able to show uh, who made it and who didn't make it to the final squad, but could only go as far as predicting who the starters were going to be. So here we'll begin with the list that we compiled for the previous cup. We'll review, review who made the squad and update by saying who the starters were. And then we'll turn our attention to um, the upcoming cup and uh, update the players based on their participation over the past two years. And then we will emerge with a new list of players and their likelihood of making it uh, to the squad for this cup. Also, we're going to put a few players in the spotlight. Uh, these will be players who were not covered in the previous media cast uh, for, the, for the 2022 African Cup and who have a good chance of being starters. So any main players that we don't put in the spotlight today were covered in the media cast for the 2021 Cup. And in fact, that'll be most of the players and the information in the previous media cast is not too outdated at this point. So again, we refer you to the show notes. Uh, and for fun, we're going to finish with our early predictions of starters. And uh, at the end, we'll also let you know what to expect in part two. Uh, just a word on uh, our overall uh, or what we're doing overall. We have made a separate video that we'll be covering uh, what we're going to do over the next nine months. So YouTube watchers can see uh, the link to that on the screen. And it can also be found in the show notes for both watchers and listeners. Uh, in short, we have just completed our series on the groups, teams, and uh, players of all 24 teams, uh, or part one of the player podcast, for the 2023 Asian Cup. And now we're focused on the 2023 African Cup. We've done the groups and players there, uh, sorry, the groups and teams there, um, and are working on the players uh, right here. So both of those tournaments take place in uh, January 2024. And um, we've also started coverage of World Cup 2026 qualifying, uh, but we'll turn our attention to that more after these tournaments are completed. So let's begin then. And um, section two deals with the candidates, uh, their likelihood of making it, and really uh, why we think they are going to, uh, um, why we think uh, we put them at the level of likelihood that we do. So let's begin with the manager. Um, going into the previous cup, the manager was Mohamed uh, Magasubu. 
and we have his name uh, highlighted in green because we thought he would effectively be a starter, or in other words, we didn't think uh, he was in danger of getting fired prior to the cut. And also his name is in uh, black script uh, because he had been a... Um, he had had tournament experience going into the last cup. In fact, he was the uh, manager of Mali from 2019 to 2022. So he had taken them through the African Cup in 2019 uh, as well as in uh, 2021. However, uh, he did uh, uh, get released in, in 2022. So we will actually... Um, remove him from the list here and introduce the new manager his name is uh, in gray uh, which means that he has not had tournament experience it's eric Chelly, and he was born in the ivory coast uh, we'll do a bit of a spotlight on him here um he was born in the ivory coast and uh i don't believe oh he did uh, play uh for mali uh he, from 2004 to 2006 but not a big player for them he only had five caps with them and uh he also played his uh club soccer uh in france almost exclusively in france with uh chamois norte istris Lons, valenciennes and martigas um uh after uh, retiring from his playing career, he uh, was an assistant manager for a, for a smaller club, Consulate Marseille, in France, and uh, became the manager, The uh, moved up from assistant to actual manager. Uh, Martigues, one of the clubs he played for, he was manager uh, from 2017 to 21, Boulogne, and then in 2022 became manager of Mali uh, national team. So he will lead them going into the cup. We will talk a little bit about at the uh, end uh, in the spotlight review section, whether we think he's going to be a starter. In other words, whether we think uh, he is in danger of being fired shortly before the cup. Um, and we actually do have reason to think that he might uh, not, we don't strongly think so, but we think uh, there's some, uh, uh, a bit of chaos on the team uh, in terms of positions and players uh, that'll become evident as we go through the players. So uh, we will talk about more uh, in the spotlight review. Let's move on to goalkeepers and uh, begin by listing the candidates that we had uh, in the previous cup. So we had uh, no definite candidate, but two likely candidates. One of them, Ibrahim Munkuro and uh, Ismail Diawara. Uh, we also had two possible candidates, uh, Jigui Diara and uh, Mohamed Nier. And then we had uh, a possible but unlikely candidate in uh, Adama Keita. But we usually don't put these on the list uh, unless they come back into uh, come back into the story, and Adama Keita didn't. He played his last um, match in June 2021, so we won't put him on the list or the player that uh, we had who seemed to be off the squad and turned out to be. So let's look at these uh, four players that we have on the list. Um, and I should say uh, we did predict starters, but I believe we predicted these starters after the rosters came out. So uh, we had um, uh, Ibrahim Munkuro and Jiggy Diara uh, both as possible starters. We, we weren't uh, uh, confident to, to actually nominate a starter among them. Anyway, we're going to remove those highlights as we um, compile our list towards the upcoming cup. And let's begin, though, with uh, Ibrahim Munkuru and see uh, if he was a starter. And he was. He was both selected for the Cup and started and finished all four games there. Uh, since that time, he has started only six of the uh, 18 games uh, since the start of the 2022 World Cup. Uh, on the bench for nine and not selected for three others. So uh, we now have him as a... Uh, uh, well, a likely candidate, just as he was going into the previous cup. Um, next, we have Ismail Diawara. Uh, he was also selected for the uh, final squad, but on the roster, but saw no action. He was on the bench for all four games. 
Uh, since the Cup, though, he has started nine of their 18 senior games. And I'll just pause there to say what I mean by that. Uh, we're not counting any local tournaments or uh, the African Nas Nations Championship. The African Nations Championship is a tournament uh, that only players uh, based in Africa are eligible to play in. So since most of the, the senior team is playing uh, abroad, um, we don't count that. Uh, so 18 senior games means um, mostly they're qualifying games for cup and uh, friendlies. Uh, there Anyway, uh, Ismail Diawara starting nine of their 18 senior games and uh, on the bench for seven and not selected for only two matches. So uh, we definitely think he will be uh, selected for the squad. So having been likely last time, we now move Ismail Diawara up to definite. The first of the possible candidates was Jigwi Diawara. We even thought he might be a starter. Uh, he wasn't, though. Nevertheless, he was uh, selected and on the bench for all four games. And uh, since that cup, he started three of their 18 games and uh, on the bench for 11 of those and not selected for three others. However, those were the last three matches. So um, that brings a bit of doubt into our minds. We probably lowered him one notch because of that. And Jigwi Diara, uh, Diara, Diara uh, a possible in the previous cup uh, stays at the possible level for this cup. The second of our possible candidates was Mohamed Niare, and uh, he was not selected for the cup and uh, has not appeared since. So his last appearance for the national team was in November 2021, uh, shortly before the tournament there. And uh, so we remove him from the list here. And uh, let's just see if we have any to add. We have one candidate at the possible level to add to the list, and that is Abubakar Dumbia. And uh, Dumbia um, uh, returned after a 23-month absence. Uh, prior to that, he had just appeared once on the bench um, in 2021 and returned in January 2023. He didn't start any of their remaining 10 games, but was on the bench for six However, that includes the last two matches. Uh, and so uh, we have him as a possible candidate uh, going into this cup. All right, so uh, let's review the list then as it looks going into this cup. And we have a definite candidate in Ismail Diawara, a likely candidate in Ibrahim Munkoro, and two possible candidates in Jigi uh, Diara and Abubakar Dumbia. Uh, we'll finish with like a summary of the situation over the um, of the position over the past two years. So uh, Munkoro started all four games in the African Cup in January 2022, as well as the two World Cup qualifying games, uh, the playoff games for the 22 World Cup uh, that they had against Tunisia. That was in March 2022. However. Uh, in June, just a couple of months later, um, Diawara uh, took over the starting position and started the first four games of their African Cup qualifying campaign. And uh, Diara, Gigi Diara, started the last two. However, Diawara came back to start the two World Cup qualifying games for the 2026 World Cup, uh, those games in November. So the two most recent games uh, there. So... Um, with no great confidence. Well, we're not going to predict the starters uh, right now. Uh, we'll save that until the end, actually. Let's move on uh, to the um, central defense, uh, the defense, and uh, look at what we had back uh, going into the previous cup. So no definite candidates there, but we had a likely candidate in Kiki Kuyate and in uh, Senu Kulabali. Uh, we had two possible candidates also, Mamadou Fofana and uh, Musa Sasako. Uh, we had four players at the seemingly off the squad level, but we're not going to add them to the list unless they've come back into the picture. And only one of them has. Uh, that is Mamadou Traore. And then uh, when the rosters came out, we had a new candidate uh, on the list, and um, Isaka Samake. 
All right. And uh, among those players, um, we predicted that Kiki Kuyate and Mamadou Fofana uh, would be starters. Let's take a look and see uh, if they were. Uh, beginning with Kiki Kuyate, he was selected and a starter in the Cup, so we were right on that count. And uh, he has since started 14 of their 18 games over the past two years and uh, on the bench for three. Uh, just one match that he was not selected for. So uh, Kiki Kuyate remains for us a definite... Oh, no, he was likely last time. Um, uh, moves up to a definite candidate. And uh, we'll remove the, um, the uh, green highlight uh, and talk about uh, starters for this tournament at the end. The next uh, likely candidate back then was uh, Senu Koulibaly. He was selected for the squad. He was um, on the roster but saw no action in the Cup. However, he did appear for the team after the uh, African Cup. Um, but March 2022 was his last appearance for the national team. So uh, it looks like he was called up for those 2022 World Cup playoff games, but not after that. And uh, Senu Koulibaly, we move to... Um, seemingly off the squad maybe a slim chance of him coming back into the uh, uh being called into the squad but very small and uh, next we have mamadou fofana and um he uh was the other player that we thought would be a starter but we were wrong on this count he was selected for the squad but um, uh, only on the roster didn't see any uh, action in the cup however since then he has started 10 of their 18 games as well as subbing in for one and on the bench for four so just three matches that uh, he was not selected for and uh, we now have him as a likely candidate um uh, going into this cup um, next we had uh, Musa Sasako as a possible candidate and let's see how uh, things went for him uh, he was uh, not selected for the oh sorry he was selected for the cup and uh, appeared as a substitute in game three uh, just one appearance um, uh, kind of interestingly he uh, was the uh, the the villain if you will of the uh, world cup qualifying games for the 2022 world cup those two uh, playoff games against tunisia he had a disastrous game in the first uh, of those playoff games uh, he scored an own goal which turned out to be the only goal of the series and then in a separate incident got a red card uh, just four minutes later. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, blame kind of fell on him. Uh, I don't particularly blame him. Well, the, the own goal and the red card uh, is unfortunate. But, you know, the team did have time to uh, um, uh, reverse that situation. So it doesn't come down just to him uh, making those mistakes. Anyway, uh, he was selected for the national team in, in June. So they didn't apparently blame him uh, that much, but that was his last appearance uh, for the team. And in fact, his, uh, his uh, club affiliations have kind of gone down over the past few years. He was actually with Paris Saint-Germain in uh, France uh, and then uh, went to Standard Liège in Belgium from 2020 to 2022. And now he uh, is with Sochi in Russia and on loan to Molenbeek in Belgium. So uh, a bit, uh, a definite decline in his uh, club affiliations there. Musa Sissoko, um, again, we won't take him off the list completely because he did play until June. 2022 but a slim chance of uh, of him coming back he's only 23 year old uh, 23 years old I kind of hope he does uh, recover um, from that unfortunate uh, pair of games or that unfortunate game next we have uh, Mamadou Traore uh, one of the players seemingly off the squad that turned out not to be uh, he wasn't in fact was not selected for the 2021 African Cup uh, however, he did return after a more than two-year absence in June of 2023 and started one of their remaining six games, uh, subbed in for two and was on the bench for one, uh, but not selected for two matches. That's the last two matches there 
So uh, we have him uh, at the possible level now. Um, probably a bit unlikely uh, missing the last two matches, but uh, we will leave him at the possible level. And uh, let's move on to the new candidate who came in um, when the rosters were published. That was Isaka Samake. And uh, he was uh, selected for the squad. He was on the roster, uh, but saw no action in the cup. In fact, he wasn't even called up to the bench. Uh, in that cup, they uh, were allowed to bring 28 players uh, because of COVID, the uh, roster was expanded, but they could still only bring 23 players to the bench. So every game had to leave five players uh, kind of off the squad. Um, he last appeared for the national team in the final of the 2021 African Nations Championship because uh, he plays his club soccer in Africa, in Mali. And... Um, uh, yes, as I said, did not even appear on the bench for the African Cup. So, uh, Isaka Samake, we are going to remove uh, from the list. Uh, we don't think he's a, a realistic uh, candidate for this cup. Uh, we have um, a couple of players to add to the list here. Uh, the first one comes at the likely level. It is Siku Niakate. And um, Niakate was on the team... Um, Six years ago, he returned after a six-year absence. He was actually just on the bench for a single game in 2017, uh, but then came back in September 2023 and started four of their remaining five games and was on the bench for the others. So uh, recent participation. He's also, um, uh, I wouldn't say moved up. It's kind of sideways move, but he is uh, moved from uh, Guingamp in France to Braga in Portugal, uh, what am I talking about? That is a move up um, and uh, uh, things going well for him. So uh, we have uh, Siku Niakate at the likely level uh, going into this cup. We're also going to add a player who was uh, uh, coded as a right back in um, the previous cup. Uh, we had him, let me see, we had him as a definite candidate uh, as a right back, but we're going to move him to central defense because that's where he's been playing the most, and we'll add him to the list here at the likely level, and that is uh, Fale Sacco. Um, Fale Sacco. So uh, he started and finished all four games in the Cup as a central defender. Uh, and uh, since has started seven of their 18 senior team games uh, since the start of the uh, 2022 World Cup over the past two years, as well as subbing in for three and uh, being on the bench for four. So he was injured for two and not selected for two. So usually called up uh, Fale Sacco. I'm not sure whether to put him here, though, because he seems to be moving back uh, to the... Uh, to be to the right defense over the period. Anyway, we'll leave him on the left here because we're not really sure where he's going to play. So Fale Sacco, a likely candidate, we'll probably add him to the list for right uh, backs as well. Uh, next, we add uh, two players, Musa Diara and Mamadou Traore at the possible level. Oops, sorry, we already have Mamadou Traore there. So Musa Diara... Um, got his first appearance on the bench in September 2022 and started two of their 10 games, uh, remaining 10 games, on the bench for three, uh, but not selected for five matches, including the last two. So uh, the 23-year-old Musa Diara, a possible candidate here. And uh, we have one to add at the possible but unlikely level. And that is Almami Toure. And he got his first appearance on the bench in March 2022, those uh, World Cup qualifying playoff games. Uh, didn't start any games since that time, but was subbed in for one and on the bench for four. Uh, however, he was not selected for the last five matches, so we don't think he's a likely candidate. Uh, okay, that is a long list of players. Let's just review the list then that we've compiled for the upcoming cup. And we have definite candidate Kiki Kuyate, three likely candidates in Mamadou Fofana, Siku Niakate, and uh, maybe Fale Sacco, although I suspect he's moving back to the right defense. Uh, two possible candidates, Mamadou Traore and newcomer Musa Diara. 
Uh, one possible but unlikely candidate, Almami Toure, and two players uh, seemingly off the squad but with a slim chance of returning, Senu Koulibaly and Musa Sissako. Wow. Uh, let's talk about the position. So it was a two-man central defence in the cup with uh, right-back Fale Sako and Kiki Kuyate playing all four games as a pairing. Uh, Kuyate continued into the playoff games, but Sako was replaced by Fofana, uh, although Fofana himself was also replaced a couple of times. I'm trying to simplify things uh, a little bit here. Um, at the end of the period, it was a bit more mixed, and we're going to see this throughout the uh, team, uh, with Nierkate coming in more often and Kuyate starting a little bit less. So uh, that, again, is a simplification. But at this point, it does seem a little bit unsettled. Uh, towards the end, Sacco even came back for one game. Uh, but it does, at this point, seem like a rotation of Kuyate, Fofana, and uh, Niakate. Oh, that is the central defense. So we move over to the left-back position and... Uh, Look at what we had going into the previous cup. It was uh, no definite candidates there, but a likely candidate in Charles Treore and a possible candidate in Romingui Kuyame. Uh, we had uh, four ca uh, candidates at the possible but unlikely or seemingly off the squad level, but we're only going to add one of them uh, to the mix because... Uh, um, They've come back into the narrative, and that is seemingly off the squad, uh, Masadio Hedera, uh, who we will talk about. So let's look and see uh, how things went for these candidates. And uh, Charles Traore uh, was selected for the Cup. We actually had nominated him as a starter uh, in the position, but uh, he was not. He was on the roster, uh, but saw no action uh, there. And uh, that was the last time he appeared for the squad. So uh, Charles Traore, um, we're going to move down to the seemingly off the squad uh, because uh, we think there's a slim chance of him coming back. Uh, next was Romani um, Kuyame. Uh, Romani Kuyame was selected for the squad. He was on the roster but saw no action and indeed was not even called up to the bench for any of the four games. So he last appeared uh, for the national team before the Cup, since he didn't appear in the Cup, uh, in November 2021. So uh, Romani Kuyame, I'm tempted to remove him uh, altogether from the squad. He doesn't have the history that... Uh, or, or he didn't have the likelihood that Charles uh, Traore had going into the last cup. But let's leave him on the list just in case. Um, the possible but unlikely candidate, uh, sorry, the seemingly off the squad candidate, Masiado Heidera, uh, was selected for the cup and to our surprise was uh, the starter in the cup there and uh, started and finished all four games and has since gone on to start 11 of their 16 games over the past two years on the bench uh, for one out with two separate injuries for three matches and not selected for three so um uh masadio hedera we have as a likely candidate i will point out that uh, uh more of his starts were toward the beginning of the period and he began to drift off uh, at the end and uh, not just because of the injuries but uh, just kind of uh starting last uh we have uh finished uh, updating the candidates then um and we will add any to the list that we that have come in since, and we do have one at the likely level, it's Amadou Dante. Uh, Amadou Dante got his first appearance on the bench shortly after the Cup in March 2022, and has since started six of their remaining 14 games, and was on the bench for seven others, so just one match that he wasn't selected for. And uh, we're gonna put uh, Amadou Dante in the spotlight here. Um, so uh, not much more to say, actually. He started with the team in 2022 and has those uh, seven caps uh, that we mentioned. Um, 
that doesn't add up. So it could be one of his caps was in the uh, um, uh, was in a game that we didn't count. Anyway, Amadou Dante, uh, 23 years old, and plays for Sturm Graz in Austria. Uh, since 2019, at the beginning of that spell, he was loaned to a smaller club, uh, Hartberg in Austria. Uh, uh, but he's been with Sturmgrass the, the whole time. That was his first uh, club. So Amadou Dante coming in as a likely candidate uh, here. And um, we do not have any more to add. So let's review the list and then uh, summarize the position. So we uh, now have likely candidates Masado, Masadio Hedera and Amadou Dante, and then otherwise just uh, those two players seemingly off the squad, Charles Traore and Rominge Kuyame, with a slim chance of coming back. Uh, in the cup, it was, uh, as we said, uh, we were surprised that our seemingly off the squad player Hedera uh, started all four of the games in the Cup. Uh, Dante came in after the Cup. He started um, the first two uh, African Cup qualifying games. And then Heydera and uh, Dante basically alternated after that. Uh, Dante did tend to play more of the friendlies towards the end, but it was Heydera who played the last two uh, World Cup qualifiers in November of 2022. So, um, that is the situation with the left back. And let's move on to the right side. Uh, our list going into the right back, uh, going into the previous cup, was uh, definite candidate Fale Sacco, who we've talked about already, and uh, likely candidate Hamari Treore. And uh, maybe we did have some inkling that Fale was going to play uh, as a centre-back because we did nominate both of these candidates as starters. So perhaps Fale was already uh, playing as a centre-back. Um, uh, we did update, uh, I'm not sure if we updated Fale, I don't think we did. We did say he was uh, starting as a central defender in all four games of the Cup. Uh, I'm not sure whether we said he started seven of their 18 games since, uh, subbed in for three, on the bench for four, injured for two, and not selected for two. So um, uh, whether he plays as a central defender this time, which seems a bit doubtful because he hasn't been much recently, uh, or whether he makes a bid for being the starting right back, uh, we at least think he would be the backup for the right back position, Fale Sacco. So um, uh, we had him as a um, we had him as a uh, likely candidate. Actually, I'm going to actually change him to uh, at central defence uh, to being a possible candidate at that level, and then a likely candidate uh, at this level. Uh, we think overall he's a likely candidate for making the squad. Let's turn to uh, Hamari Traore, who we also th thought would be a starter. And uh, indeed he was. He's, he was the captain of the team. And he was the one who started all four games as the right back. Uh, so we were, we were good in our guesses there. And uh, uh, Hamari Traore has since started 14 of their 18 games. Uh, subbed in for one and on the bench for two, just one match that he was not selected for. So that's why I said Fale Zako uh, um, as a backup uh, for the right back, because uh, Hamari Traore seems to have locked it down uh, over the past two years. So we have him as a definite candidate now. And uh, we don't have anyone to add to the list here. So uh, we are finished both with right backs and with, no, we're not finished. We got to summarize the position. So let's review the list uh, going into this cup. We have definite candidate Hamari Traore and likely candidate Fale Sacco, who may play as a central defender. Um, it was Hamari Traore, as we saw in all four games of the cup. Uh, he played all games but two. Uh, as the right back uh, since the cup and uh, two different players replaced him in the two games that he missed so we would expect it to be Sacco but actually Sacco uh, only replaced him uh, one time the other player uh, doesn't matter because it's not really in the narrative here so uh, again Pelé Sacco um, 
they're not even guaranteed actually as the backup for this position. Okay, sorry, I had to pause to cough there, but um, that cough is a transition uh, from defense to midfielders, so I did it on purpose. Uh, let's move to defensive midfielders then and see what we had back in the previous cup. No uh, definite candidates, but we had two likely candidates, uh, Aliu Diang and uh, Diadi Samatheko, or Samatheku, I should say. And then one possible candidate in uh, Czech Dukure. Uh, we also had a player seemingly off the squad uh, who turned out to be, uh, so we are not going to add him to the list. Uh, let's update these players. Um, we did think Aliu Diang uh, would be a starter, so uh, let's see if he was. Uh, no, we were wrong. He was uh, selected for the cup. Uh, but just subbed into games three and four there. Uh, since that time, he has started six of their 18 games and uh, subbed in for six and on the bench for four and not selected for two others. So uh, uh, called up quite a bit, but not often as a starter. We have uh, Aliu Dieng as a uh, possible candidate, or sorry, as a likely candidate, just as he was last time. Um, next, uh, Diadi Samaseku, we did have him as a likely candidate, and he was selected for the Cup. He was actually a starter, at least in Games 1 and 2, but he was subbed out of Game 2 at halftime and lost his starting position, uh, didn't reappear uh, after that. Uh, since that time, Samaseku has started eight of their 18 games, subbed in for four and on the bench for three, but not selected for three matches. That would put him at a likely level, except that the last two matches uh, were two of the ones that he wasn't selected for. So um, for us, that drops him down a level, creating a bit of doubt in his selection. So we move um, Samaseku down to the possible level. Uh, the player who had been at the possible level last time was Czech Dukure, and uh, Czech Dukure was not selected for the squad and uh, returned after a 12-month absence in September 2022 and uh, started five of their remaining 10 games. He was on the bench for three matches, and the only two he missed were due to injury. Uh, he has, uh, in his career, uh, moved from Lens in France to Crystal Palace in England, perhaps a slight uh, improvement uh, given that Crystal Palace is in the Premier League. Czech Ducore is only uh, 23 years old, uh, which actually surprises me because he's a, a quite familiar name. Anyway, the long and short of it is that uh, Czech Ducore is now a likely candidate along with Aliu Dien. And let's see if we have any players to add to the list. We have one player to add at the possible level, and that is Ibrahima Sosoko. Uh, Ibrahima Sosoko got his first appearance on the bench fairly recently in October 2023 and uh, started one of their remaining four games, as well as subbing in for two and on the bench for the one other. So he's been called up for the last four games and uh, we have Ibrahim and Sissoko as a possible candidate. Okay, let's, uh, re uh, no, we'll, we'll actually wait until we do central midfielders and then uh, do both uh, defensive and central midfielders together. So let's uh, look at the candidates we had for central midfield. Actually, fewer candidates than most teams have. We have no, uh, we had no definite candidate in the previous cup, but we had uh, Mohamed Kamara, uh, Mohamed Kamara too. So I might as well deal with the uh, naming conventions here. For some reason, Mali has, uh, I think, three sets of players who all have the same or very similar name. So uh, Mohamed Kamara uh, confused me. Um, in the past, as, as I put the list together, because there's another player uh, called Mohamed Kamara. Uh, he's the younger of them, so they basically referred to him as Mohamed Kamara too. Uh, and uh, we had him as a likely candidate here, and uh, we had a possible candidate in Lasana Kulabali, and uh, 
a possible but unlikely candidate we won't put on the list. But a player who was seemingly off the squad, uh, Eve Bissouma. And uh, let me just see what his um, history was uh, uh, going into the Cup. Uh, he had last appeared for the national team way back in 2018. Uh, so uh, we thought he was off the squad, but then when the preliminary squad came out, he, he was uh, selected. Uh, so that was a, an interesting story, and we'll talk about him more when we update here. And let's move to that update. I'll just say at this point, uh, we had Mohamed Kamara or Mohamed Kamara too as a starter. And then I'm not sure what our thinking was, but we also had Eve Bissouma as a starter. Actually, you know, he uh, he did uh, take a slight rise in his career. He was with Lille in France, which is not a bad team, uh, from 2016 to 2018, and then moved over to Brighton in England. Probably a bit of a rise uh, because uh, uh, Brighton, was in the Premier League, or at least heading towards it, they they reached the Premier League, and uh, he has since moved to Tottenham in England, so his career in terms of club affiliations is on the rise. Uh, but that move to Tottenham uh, wouldn't have affected his selection for this cup, because uh, that was the, the, the cup was before his move to Tottenham. Uh, anyway, for whatever reason, we did think he was a starter, and uh, let's see if uh, Kamara or he started. So uh, Mohamed Kamara was selected for the squad, but was not a starter. He was just a substitute into game three there, but he did go on to start and finish game four. So I'm going to claim victory on that one. Okay, I, I can't. Um, Mohamed Kamara has since started 10 of their 18 games, uh, subbed in for one, on the bench for three, uh including the last match and not selected before others so uh, we have mohammed kamara as a uh, likely candidate we'll just remove the highlights here like a uh, likely candidate just as he was going into the previous cup uh, we thought ibusima would be a starter and we were wrong on that come too but we're going to claim a partial victory because he was subbed into game one and then gained a starting position after that for the remaining three games. But uh, close but no cigar there. Since that time, he has started eight of their 18 games, subbed in for three on the bench for one, injured for two and not selected for four. So Yves Basuma, uh, given his current club affiliation, perhaps not starting as much as one might expect, uh, and we actually have him as a... Uh, a likely candidate here um, going into this tournament. Uh, Lasana Koulibaly was a possible candidate uh, back then, and um, we should have actually done him before Basuma. But anyway, he was selected for the squad. Uh, he was subbed into game one and uh, started game two but he was subbed out again to at halftime there and didn't appear after that. Uh, Koulibaly started uh, four of their 18 games, uh, uh, well, it includes the Cup, so I'll say over the past two years. Uh, he was uh, subbed in for two, on the bench for eight. Uh, so just four matches that he wasn't selected for, but uh, uh, is not really a starter. We have uh, Koulibaly as a possible candidate, just like we did uh, going into the previous Cup. And we have no players to add to the list here. So let's now summarize the list for defensive and central midfielders and then see how those positions have played out uh, over the past two years. So uh, defensive midfielders, we have likely candidate Aliou Dieng and Cech Dukure. Uh, possible candidates Diadi Semathaku and uh, Ibrahima Sissoko. And then uh, central midfielders, we have two likely candidates, Mohamed Kamara and Yves Basuma, and one possible candidate in Lasana Koulibaly. Okay. In terms of the uh, position, uh, it was quite unstable in the cup. It was a two-man central midfield, except for game two, where there were three uh, in a line, three central midfielders. Um, the attacking midfielder, Amadou Heidera, 
And I'll just say, uh, don't confuse him with the left back we just met, Masadio Hedera. Uh, Amadou Hedera played three of the four games. Samaseku and Bisuma uh, each played two games, and then several players appeared just once. Um, it became even more confusing in the two playoff games for the World Cup in March of 2022, five different players used over those uh, two games. So one with two central midfielders and one with three. Uh, it became a bit more stable for a while after that. Samaseku and Kamara were paired in four of the six African Cup qualifying games, but uh, Dikure was the only one to start more than once. Uh, although the other candidates here that we've listed here uh, were also starting uh, in other positions, which we'll deal with when we get to those positions. Uh, and as in the World Cup playoff games, five different players were used in the final World Cup qualifying games for 2026 in November. So uh, this could be seen as a bit of a mess, and, and in some ways it is, but uh, it could be seen as a rotation of defensive, central, and attacking midfielders uh, among about five main players and then three or four whose names pop up now and again uh, including the names that we've introduced here so uh, very hard to uh, simplify this um, in a way but it just seems like kind of a massive rotation in the midfield with uh, players playing in different positions and we're going to see that in other positions uh, up ahead too uh, wow, okay, let's move on to uh, left midfield and right midfield. And uh, again, nowadays not many candidates are uh, classified this way. Uh, we had uh, no left midfielders going into the Cup. Well, we did have one uh, going into the previous Cup, but he was possible but unlikely and uh, has not come into the, into the picture. So we'll leave him off the list. As a right midfielder, we also had uh, one uh, seemingly off the squad uh, there. However, he did come back into the picture, so we will introduce him. It is uh, Hamadou Traore, uh, seemingly off the squad there, but actually selected for the cup. Uh, but he was on the roster and saw no action, Hamadou Traore. And uh, he uh, has not appeared for the team since the 2021 African Cup. So uh, that is... Uh, um, his short story, and actually the short story of the left and right midfielders, because really um, we're going to remove Hamadou Traore from the list here, uh, and we have no candidates over here. So um, I'll say the 4-2-3-1 the, uh, formation, I'll repeat that, 4-2-3-1, uh, uh, it seems to be their favorite formation. I'd say they use it about half of the time. However, Mali sometimes does use a 4-3-3 formation, which does have these positions. However, as is the case with many teams, it's now the defensive midfielders and central midfielders uh, who play as left midfielder or right midfielder when they do use this formation. Okay, we move now into the upper half of the field, and we begin with the uh, left quadrant. So that's going to include left wingers, left attacking midfielders, and sometimes left forwards uh, if these players uh, 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 play it. So uh, we'll talk about that more in the summary. Um, but in the 4-2-3-1, which they favor, it tends to be left attacking midfielder. Let's look at the candidates that we had going into the previous cup. Uh, we had uh, no definite candidates, but a likely candidate in Musa Gineppo, who we thought would be a starter. And we had, uh, actually, we had Musa uh, Dumbia as an attacking midfielder uh, in the previous cup. But just for the sake of simplifying things, we'll put him here and pretend that uh, we had him as a likely candidate uh, as a left attacking midfielder, which he is coded as. Uh, so those two candidates, we also had one who was seemingly off the squad and turned out to be because has not uh, appeared since. So let's deal with these two candidates. Uh, Musa Gineppo, 
Uh, we, again, thought he was going to be a starter, and he was, at least in the first two games. Started games one and two there, but uh, um, was suspended on yellows cards for game three and did not um, uh, start game four. He appeared as a substitute in game four. Uh, since then, Gineppo has started six of their 18 games, subbed in for four, on the bench for one, and not selected for seven others. And that includes the last four matches. So uh, we kind of being a bit generous considering him, him a likely candidate. Well, that's not true. I mean, we consider him likely uh, because of his club affiliations and his history with the national team. He was a starter in the 2019 African Cup as well and is with uh, uh, Standard Liège in Belgium, a recent move from Southampton in England. Uh, it's his second time with Standard Liège, but those are pretty respectable clubs. And uh, so these uh, other factors boost us up to thinking that he is a, a possible candidate, even though his participation suggests uh, unlikely. Uh, so actually, he's moving down from the previous cup where we had him as a likely candidate. Uh, next, uh, Musa Dumbia. And I think we had um, him as a possible starter. Um, he was selected, but he was not a starter. He subbed into games one and two, but then gained a starting position for games three and four, uh, obviously replacing Gineppo there. Um, uh, since then, he has started five of their 18 games and subbed in for six, uh, on the bench for two, and not selected for five games. So we have him as a uh, possible candidate here. Um, I'm kind of thinking uh, a bit more towards the likely. Uh, one of the reasons uh, we kind of downgraded him is that his club affiliations have gone down. From uh, uh, Sota in France, he has now moved to Saudi Arabia, which is a bit of a retirement league. And uh, it's Al Adala, not even one of the bigger teams in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so Moussa Dumbia, uh, likely in the previous cup, uh, now moves down to possible. You may think, well, they have to use someone, and uh, that's part of the bigger story for Mali. So let's review the uh, players. Uh, uh, well, both uh, Gineppo and Dumbia moved down from likely in the previous cup to possible in this cup, and that's all we have for players coded in this position. And as we saw, uh, Gineppo was the starter in the first two games of the cup, and uh, Dumbia in games three and four. Dumbia actually uh, uh, played fairly well uh, in the tournament. And um, uh, over the next 10 games, apart from Gineppo appearing three times, it was a different player every time. Uh, Dumbia just one of them, so just one start for him uh, over the uh, World Cup qualifying for 2022 playoff games and then the African uh, African Cup qualifying games and even beyond that uh, into the World Cup qualifying for 2026. Uh, several of the forwards appear here for one game. Uh, sometimes the, the formation does call for a forward, like the 4-3-3 uh, formation, but sometimes those forwards are playing out of position as a winger or a left attacking midfield. So uh, a bit chaotic here. Gineppo does seem the most likely, but he's only started a third of the games. Uh, so uh, it's difficult for us to predict that he's going to be a starter uh, there. And again, we're going to see this problem uh, in other positions. Let's move over to the right wing, uh, where in um, in the previous cup, we had no uh, candidates at the definite, likely, possible, or even at the possible but unlikely uh, level. We did have three candidates who seemed to be off the squad, and that proved to be the case. Uh, so we really had no candidates uh, over here. And uh, we still don't really, but we do have one to add to the list, and that is Fuseni Diabate at the uh, possible level. So uh, Fuseni Diabate got his first cap just recently in October 2023 and started two of their remaining four games. Um, 
uh, subbing in for the other two matches. So started two and subbed in two. Uh, no surprise there that they're really looking for uh, a right winger. Uh, and uh, nevertheless, because he's so new to the squad, uh, we just have him at the possible level, although uh, he may actually have the best chance. Let's describe the situation and my uh, comments will be in a bit more context. Uh, actually, it was very steady in the cup. It was uh, attacking midfielder Adama Maluda Traore, who we'll meet soon uh, among the attacking midfielders. He started all four games in the cup. Uh, but then after the cup, he became part of a rotation uh, with the attacking midfielder Heidera and also central midfielder Aliu Diang. Diang. Uh, so all three of them might be considered possible starters, um, especially because each of them also plays in other positions. But again, uh, none of them has more than uh, has started more than half of the game. So we're really uh, not sure uh, uh, what it's going to look like on the right side. Already in the in the cup, it was uh, it was uh, Traore playing out of position really. Uh, okay, and uh, let's move on to the forward line. And we begin with attacking midfielders. We really uh, uh, think of this in terms of uh, central attacking midfielders. And uh, the candidates we had in the previous cup uh, is the other name problem. And this one is, uh, is uh, quite humorous, actually, because it's so uh, complex. We have Adama Traore 1 and Adama Traore 2. And it's been very difficult for me and other sources I see to uh, separate and not confuse these two players. So uh, initially they tried to do it with number one and number two. The problem is both players are born in the same year and same month, uh, June 1995. So it's really, uh, it's you know, almost like identical twins and uh, discerning which one is the oldest of course uh, uh, there is uh, a clear case but they they kind of seem the same uh, i'm not sure if my twins analogy really worked there but that's for john uh, uh what they've done since is actually just uh, called adama traore one uh, adama maluda traore and adama traore two um adama traore nos and that's what I've gone with over the past couple of years. So that's what I'll stick with. Um, anyway, both of them definite candidates. Kind of funny. They play similar positions and uh, uh, their histories are quite similar in several ways. Uh, beyond them, we had a likely candidate in the player I've mentioned uh, uh, on the right wing, Amadou Hedera. I think we also mentioned him in central defense. So let's see uh, how things turned out for these players. So firstly, Adama Maluda Traore. Uh, well, we saw him uh, start, no, uh, Adama Traore. I'm getting confused here too. Okay, he was selected for the cup and we saw him um, starting all four games and lining up as the right attacking midfielder. Uh, it was a right attacking midfielder in three of the games and a right winger in a different formation in the other game. Anyway, it was always him. And uh, he has since started seven of their 18 games, uh, subbed in for five and on the bench for two and not selected for four matches. So he seems to have lost his starting position. But in terms of being selected for the squad, uh, we think of him as a likely candidate. We did uh, actually think of both of the Adama Traores as starters. So as far as he goes, we were right. Uh, but he hasn't been starting as much since. And we move him down to the likely level. Uh, Adama Traore, sorry, Adama Traore Nos, meanwhile, was selected for the cup and uh, actually did start, but only games one and three there, and he was a sub in the other uh, two games. Uh, since the cup, he started only two of their games, uh, two of their 18 games, subbed in for two and on the bench for one. But he was out with two separate injuries for six games and not selected for seven others. So we are demoting uh, Adama Traore Nos down to the possible but unlikely level going into this cup. 
Uh, okay, that is uh, them. And the other player we need to update is Amadou Hedera. And uh, uh, Hedera was selected for the squad. He started all four games. Uh, we had him highlighted in blue, so we thought he was a potential uh, starter. Uh, started all four games except for game two. And even in that game, he was subbed in at halftime. Since that time, uh, Hedera has started eight of their 18 senior games, uh, subbed in for four and on the bench for three. Uh, so injured for one and not selected for two. So regularly called up and uh, not used as consistently uh, recently as he was uh, at the beginning of the period. And uh, furthermore, uh, uh, coded as a central midfielder where we have seen him play uh, 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 but we have him still as an attacking midfielder, uh, and he does move all over the field. So Amadou Heydara uh, remains a likely candidate, just as he was in the previous cup. Um, I just want to see if we've added any to the list here. We do have one uh, to add at the likely level, and that is uh, Kamori Dumbia. So Kamori Dumbia... Uh, got his first appearance on the bench in June 2022 and started seven of their remaining 10 games, uh, subbed in for one and on the bench uh, for two, and just two matches that he wasn't selected for uh, two of the 10 games after he came in. So uh, Kamori Dumbia actually has five goals in his nine caps and is just 20 years old. We might as well put him in the spotlight here because uh, uh, we see him... Uh, not so much as a potential starter, but a likely candidate nevertheless, and there's not much to add. He was their top scorer, though, in African Cup, uh, in uh, qualifying for this African Cup, scored three of their 15 goals there, and uh, he plays for Stade Reims in France, uh, but he wasn't born in France like, uh, like many of them were. were. He was with a youth club in Mali and uh, first uh, called up to Star Dreams, which is his first club. Uh, Kamori Dumbia, then, a likely candidate. Let's review the list and then uh, summarize the position. So we have three likely candidates in Adama Maluda Traore, uh, Amadou Heidera, and newcomer Kamori Dumbia. And then, uh, possible but unlikely, the other Adama Traore, Adama Traore Nos, uh, 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 moving down from definite to possible but unlikely. Okay, so uh, the attacking midfield position is used about half the time. Uh, it's used in their favorite 4-2-3-1 formation. And it was Adama Nos Traore twice in the cup. Uh, but even in the fourth game there, uh, Bissouma, uh, Yves Bissouma filled the role, and he continued to do so uh, uh, through the middle part of the period here. Uh, Komori Dumbia, I, I, I have here, Dumbia took over towards the end, although it was both Dumbias. We're going to meet um, the... Uh, oh, we already met the left attacking midfielder, Musa Dumbia, and we're now meeting attacking midfielder, Komori Dumbia. So this is another kind of name conundrum. Uh, both of those uh, stepping into the central attacking midfield role. However, the uh, position was not used in the last two games. So once again, uh, we're going to see it's really difficult to nominate a starter here, and uh, we'll talk about that in the uh, spotlight review. Uh, meanwhile, well, let's move on. We don't have any secondary strikers, so we're in our last uh, category, the forwards, and uh, let's see what we had. Uh, back in the previous cup. Uh, we had no definite or likely candidates, uh, and we had five possible candidates. Uh, no, we had seven possible candidates here. Uh, first, uh, El Bilal Toure, uh, who we did uh, nominate as a starter. That was uh, pretty bold of us there. Khalifa Koulibaly, uh, Ibrahim Kone, Lassine Sineyoko and Mahamadou Dukore. We had a space between them and the next two candidates, so 
Uh, I'm not sure why we did, but anyway, we'll introduce them as possible candidates. Also, Steku Koita and Musa Kiabu. Uh, we also had uh, six candidates uh, seemingly off the squad, but blessedly we don't have to deal with any of them because none of them have come back into the fray. So uh, we, we'll just deal with the the plentiful candidates that we already have to look at here. And uh, maybe I can try to deal with it a little quickly. Uh, first of all, El Bilal Toure, we had nominated him as a starter. Uh, we were wrong. He was uh, subbed into games. So he was selected, but subbed into two games there. Actually got a red card uh, in game one, uh, which made him ineligible for the uh, two middle games. And he has since started four of their 18 games since the start uh, over the past two years. Started four on the bench for two, but out with two separate injuries for seven games, including a hamstring injury for the last five matches. He was also suspended for those two games in the cup. So really, actually just not selected for two matches, but has been out for far more than that and has an injury doubt hanging over him uh, coming into this cup. Um, since September 2023. So we'll have to see when we get closer to the cup uh, if it looks like he's going to recover. Uh, El Bilal Toure, then, uh, even with the injury, uh, moves down to a possible candidate here. And, uh, oh, he was at the possible level uh, already. Next, we have Khalifa Koulibaly. He was uh, selected for the cup and subbed into two games. Uh, but since I started only two of their games, uh, over the past two years, subbed in for three and on the bench for three and not selected for 10 matches. So uh, we do have him as a uh, uh, possible candidate, uh, but he has just one call up and that was only to the bench in the last seven games. So I think I'm actually going to move him to uh, possible but unlikely here. Uh, I'm making an on-field uh, decision. Uh, oops, okay, so uh, let's move Khalifa Koulibaly to the possible but unlikely level. And uh, next we have Ibrahim Akone. And uh, Ibrahim Akone was selected to the squad. And um, uh, excuse me here, I'm just finding him on my list. Uh, and he was the starter, actually, started all four games, which is surprising. Uh, in the environment, uh, I'll talk about that later, uh, started all four games and he has since started eight of their 18 games. Uh, he was subbed out for four. Uh, however, he too is out or was out for the last three with an ankle injury. So he too is an injury concern. There were three matches that he was not selected for. Uh, so Ibrahim Akone, we uh, have him as the uh, as now as a likely candidate, but with uh, an injury asterisk hanging over him, uh, Ibrahim Akone. Next on the list was Lassine Sinayoko. Uh, Lassine Sinayoko uh, was selected for the Cup. He appeared only in Game 3 as a substitute and has since started three of their 18 games, uh, subbed in for three and on the bench for two. Uh, but not selected for 10 matches. Uh, that includes nine in a row in the middle of the period, but he did kind of come back into the squad at the end. And so we have Lassine Sinayoko as a possible candidate, just as uh, uh, the previous cup. Next, we have Mohamedou Dukure. Uh, Mohamedou Dukure was not selected for the squad and has not appeared for the team since before the cup, October 2021, his last appearance. So we move, uh, we remove him from the list. Next was uh, Seku Koita, and um, he uh, was not selected for the squad, but that was because of uh, an injury, a cruciate ligament injury. Uh, that made his selection impossible, but we weren't sure that he was going to be selected otherwise. Anyway, uh, Koita returned from a from that 12-month injury in June of 2022 and started three of their remaining games, uh, subbed in for two and on the bench for two. So it was looking good for him until he too 
was injured uh, in the last part of the period for four games. So during the period where he was uh, healthy, he uh, there was just one match that he wasn't called up uh, to, but injuries getting in the way in the previous cup and possibly in this cup too. But we will uh, move him to where we think he is at the likely level uh, and then wait until we get closer to the cup to see if the... Uh, injury is going to interfere with that and finally we have Musa Kiabu and uh, honestly I must confess I'm not sure why we had him at the possible level he had played only two of their uh, 11 games uh, since joining the team uh, prior to the cup and was injured for over half of those games so uh, probably shouldn't have been on the list as a possible candidate and uh, was not selected for the cup and uh, June 2021 was the last time he played so we're removing him from the list here and uh, now that we've updated all of the players from the previous list uh, let's add any that have come into the picture and we have one at the likely level it is Nene Dorgelis and um, he got his first cap in March 2022 he started three of the remaining 14 games there but was subbed in for eight and on the bench for one so just two matches that uh, he was not selected for. And we are going to put him in the spotlight because he's one of many possible starters here. Uh, he uh, is 21 years old and plays for Red Bull, Red Bull Salzburg uh, in Austria since 2021. And he was with uh, Guidar's Youth Club in Mali, one of the main uh, youth clubs in Mali the players um, uh, come, to, come through to Europe through. Uh, I think I finally uh, worked out the syntax of that sentence. Okay, uh, so Nene Dorgelis, a uh, likely candidate, and I think, uh, note we have one more at the possible level, Yusufu Niakate. Uh, Yusufu Niakate uh, just uh, got his first cap recently in November 2023. He didn't start either of the remaining two games there, but he was subbed in for both. So. Yusufu uh, Niakate joining the throng of potential players. And um, we have one more at the possible but unlikely level, and that is um, Bubakar Traore. And he got his first cap in March 2023, started one of their remaining eight games, subbed in for two, but not selected for the last uh, three matches. So the 24-year-old, uh, a possible candidate but unlikely uh, let us finish by reviewing the list then that we have uh, going into the upcoming cup. And we have three likely candidates in Ibrahima Kone uh, and Seku Koita. Uh, both of those, though, with uh, injury concerns hanging over him, over them. And newcomer Nene de Dorjalis. We also have three possible candidates in El Bilal Toure, Lassine Sinayoko, and uh, Yusufu Niakate, and then two unlike, uh, possible but unlikely candidates, Khalifa Koulibaly and Bubakar Traore. And we finish by looking at the position as it's played out over the past two years. Ibrahim Akone uh, was the starter in all four games of, of the Cup, and usually as a lone forward there. Um, but as with the other positions, it was a string of single appearances by players um, over the course of uh, basically when the new manager came in, uh, although Kone did start in three of the eight games. Uh, in the last games, they used uh, more than one forward. It was uh, five different players uh, uh, covering the, the forward spots. That included the two Dumbias, and Kone was not one of these players. So uh, very unsettled at the uh, forward position also. Okay, that brings us to the end of the uh, uh, candidate section. And so we move on to section three and the spotlight review. But I've been a bit nervous about how to handle this because um, uh, it's pretty chaotic. So uh, let me just begin by uh, uh, moving the manager position. I think I'm going to talk about the uh, manager at the beginning and at the end here. So uh, I'll just begin by pointing out that manager Mohamed Magasubu, uh, who led them through the 
uh, world, oh sorry, through the 2021 African Cup at the beginning of 2022 there, and the two uh, World Cup playoff games, had fairly uh, settled squad, uh, generally the same starters in the same positions, um, but all of that changed when the new manager, uh, Eric Chelly, came in. And I will talk about more uh, that more at the end. But uh, basically, the uh, amount of rotation and players playing in different positions makes it very difficult to uh, predict who's going to be starters, uh, particularly in the uh, attacking end of the field. It's a bit better um, uh, in the defensive ends. Uh, let's begin then. So... Um, uh, for that reason, and we'll talk about it more at the end, we're going to put uh, Eric Shelley uh, not as a definite um, uh, manager, but as the likely manager. It will be late in the game to change it at this point, but we do think um, there's enough uh, kind of chaos on the squad uh, to uh, suggest that he might be replaced before the tournament comes around. Anyway, uh, for goalkeeper... Uh, we have um, Ismail Diawara. Uh, we, we, we're going to stick with him as a starter, even though for the last three African Cup qualifying games, uh, he was replaced by uh, uh, Jigu uh, Dio, Diara, but he did come back to start the two uh, World Cup playoff games in November. So uh, we're going to bet on him as being the starter, but there is an outside chance of... Uh, Jigui Diawara, uh, sorry, Jigui Diara uh, being the starter. Uh, in central defense, again, it's been um, a little less uh, stable since the new manager has come in. Uh, we would have Kiki Kuyate uh, as a definite starter, but he hasn't been starting so much um, in recent games. Uh, Mamadou Fofana and Siku Niakate are the other main candidates, but we have all three of them as uh, likely to possible starters rather than uh, being confident that they will be starting there. Uh, at the left-back position, um, we have, again, uh, two possible candidates because we're not sure that it will be Masiado Heidera uh, we think that uh, Amadou Dante has a chance, the newcomer, of uh, taking over the starting position. So we uh, think it might be a rotation between the two of them, uh, but I guess we would uh, give the edge to Heidara uh, still there. Right back is a, a bit more clear. We have uh, Hamari Traore as the starter, and we highlight him in green uh, to suggest that we're fairly confident about that. And uh, from here on, central midfield all the way to forward, we are not nominating any candidates because, um, uh, frankly, well, you'll see why we, we, we don't think anyone is uh, consistent enough to nominate as a bit of a starter. So uh, in central midfield and in the attacking midfield, that means left winger, right winger, and attacking midfielder, uh, it seems like kind of a massing cloud, a swirling cloud of rotation among all those players, defensive midfielders, central midfielders, attacking midfielders, um, really about uh, seven players uh, and then a few more besides who pop up again. So we will create a list of uh, those kind of players at the end, but uh, we don't feel confident enough even to say any uh, possible starters there. Uh, at the right wing, um, sorry, in central midfield, um, we do have uh, Mohamed Kamara, Yves Boussima, and... Uh, a couple of other candidates. We will go through them at the end. Ali Udiang and Czech de Corre are probably the four main candidates there. Uh, at the left wing, uh, again, Gineppo, um, Musa Gineppo seems to be the most likely candidate, but it hasn't started. He's only started about a third of the game, so we can't really uh, put his name as a even a likely starter. In the right wing, it's three different players who we'll meet shortly. Uh, and then we had a new player coming in at the end, uh, Fuseni Diabate, who started two of the last four games. So really unclear who the starter would be there. Central midfielder, um, 
we have players uh, starting here who have also played in other positions. So we think there are a few candidates who are, who are going to be likely starters uh, because they play in different positions. We just can't pin down uh, what position they would be starters in. And finally, uh, in addition to all of that at the forward line, there are a couple of injury concerns. But again, no players who have started enough uh, for us to think that they would be starters going into this cup. In fact, in the last two games, it was five different players um, uh, who appeared in the three-man and two-man forward line. So that seems particularly unsettled. So what I've decided to do here is kind of make a list of players who have started uh, about a third to two-thirds of the games and uh, at least you will know which uh, characters we're talking about. So among defensive midfielders, we have uh, Cech Ducore and uh, Aliu Diang. Cech Ducore has started five of their 18 games, Aliu Diang six. So again, not really enough for us to nominate them as, um, uh, as candidates, as starters. In central midfield, we have Mohamed Kamara, uh, with 10 starts, he's got the most, actually. And Yves Busima, 8 of 18 uh, games that he started in. Um, for uh, left wing or left attacking midfielder, we have Musa Gineppo with uh, 6 starts and Musa Dumbia with 5 starts. For the um, attacking midfield role, um, Amadou Heidera, Amadou Maluda Traore, and Kamori Dumbia. Uh, they have... Um, eight starts for Heidera and seven starts for the other two. And then uh, at the top, we have uh, Ibrahim Akone uh, with eight starts, uh, except he is an injury concern, uh, as is Seku Koita, who we had as a likely candidate, but who uh, was injured for the last cup and looks like he might be injured for this one. In addition to these uh, two, four, six, 11 players, uh, we have probably eight players who have had uh, maybe three or four caps who've been in and out. Uh, the one, the newcomer we mentioned as right winger, uh, Fuseine Diabate, as an example of that, who also have a bid of being a starter. So the long and short of it is we don't know. And so we'll go back to talking about the uh, manager. So again, previous manager Mohamed Magasubu um, uh, had very uh, stable squad, uh, many of the players in the Cup starting in one position for all four games, uh, whereas since uh, Chele has come in in May 2022, uh, it's been very unsettled, especially at the attacking end of the field. And um, we could just speculate as to why that is. He is not a manager with international tournament experience. Uh, he was a player for Mali, uh, who played, uh, I think, six international games for them, but who has been brought in. And uh, maybe he doesn't really have the authority to meet the demands of the players and is trying to uh, kind of please all of them. Um, it hasn't actually affected their performances that much. They did qualify for this tournament. Uh, that they didn't qualify for the World Cup and uh, uh, lost uh, that set with Tunisia in March 2022 is not his fault. That was under the previous manager, perhaps the reason that he was replaced. Uh, but in World Cup qualifying, they did suffer a home draw with Central African Republic. So perhaps some of this rotation uh, affecting the, the squad. I just can't imagine that the uh, players and fans are happy with this and uh, not knowing who's going to start uh, and where they're going to start uh, either. So uh, it'll be interesting to compare them with Tunisia, who they once again meet in the Cup here, uh, having met them at the group stage in the last Cup and in those World Cup 2022 playoff games, because Tunisia is uh, just like Mali was in the previous Cup, very stable squad with players playing in the same position. But I can't help but think it's going to have an effect on Mali. And uh, for that reason, uh, we put Eric uh, Chelly as a likely candidate uh, to reach the Cup, um, but not as a definite candidate, because we think... Um, uh, that is not really a great situation for Mali going into the Cup. Okay, 
that is the end of the spotlight review a bit of a longer one than usual there and let's move on to uh the um other part of the conclusion where we preview part two so uh in part two we're gonna do it after the final squad is released so we'll be able to tell you who made it to the final squad perhaps even who made it to the preliminary squad if they have one and then we'll also give an update on injury uh, injuries particularly important among the forwards uh, here um, Ibrahim Kone and um, Seku Koita uh, when we're closer to the cup we'll see if their injury endangers their participation in the cup. That's it for part one. We originally planned to tag on our past, present, and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10 minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. We would like to thank Pixabay and Alexei Ivanov of Mappa Music for the wonderful background music accompanying this media cast.